one of the things, and perhaps you will be remembered for for a very long time, was the decision you took on the whole transparency in the commission structure that you brought about as far as mutual funds were concerned. What I want you to tell the viewers today, Mr. Bhave, is that this, in effect, has made investing uh, through a vehicle into the markets today one of the cheapest financial products. I think it was uh, one of the fundamental changes uh, that we brought about in the uh, way the industry was operating and the way that product was being sold. That product was being sold uh, more on a transactional basis. So I do this transaction with you, I collect my fees and I run away. After that, I have nothing to do with you. And therefore, we said that the power of deciding how much to pay must go into the hands of the person who is being serviced. This power going to investors did hurt the industry. It was a fundamental change. And when a fundamental change occurs, People are very upset that uh, I can't uh, live my life the way I used to live always. A lot of people went even to the ridiculous extent of saying that the withdrawals from mutual funds are because the entry load is not there. Now, entry load and exit has nothing to do with each other. My own uh, understanding is that the industry will overcome this. It will take time. It's not something, these kinds of changes do not happen in six months or one year. It's a long-term effort. So actually, for the amount of money that has come in in the first year after this uh, entry load uh, change was brought about by SEBI, indicates that investors saved something like 1,300 crores. Oh. Now, I don't know of a single decision which in one year has benefits investors uh, this kind of benefit. You know, while we've had good regulations which have been tested judicially over a period of time when it comes to brokers, when it comes to mutual funds, FIIs, etc. But the whole investment advisor, you know, that animal sitting out there and which is, runs into a few thousand people, is that something on your radar at all? Very much so, but um, I believe that uh, we first need to make an effort to equip them with the ability to give good investment advice. And uh, therefore, in terms of priority, we are first trying to see how to reach this uh, uh, investment advice education a little wider or a certified financial planner or whatever you call it, and <clears throat> make sure that they are equipped well and then take up uh, regulation. So I am hopeful that uh, before I demit office, we will be in a position to um, work out something. You are part of multiple regulatory associations overseas. You must be interacting with a whole lot of foreign institutional investors. This year, we saw record inflows. Are you seeing a trend today where more serious money is actually flowing? But the trend that you're seeing in the last six, seven months, is it more towards the serious long-term pension fund players or is it still... When we say that FIs are disinvesting or FIs are investing in the market, the actual picture is more complicated. When FIs are disinvesting, some FIs are investing and some are going out. So in 2008, you would have seen that uh, quite a few FIs invested. Mm -hmm. Those would have been the long-term people. Because 2008 was not the time when a person with a short-term horizon would have liked to come into Indian market. Mm -hmm. So that time, the more patient money was coming in. Some amount of patient money would have come in subsequently as well. Just because people are coming in when the market is high doesn't mean that it is impatient money. It could simply mean that that money has very few alternatives around the world. But um, definitely um, we now have a far greater degree of variety among these investors. So pension funds, university endowments, India funds, emerging market funds, hedge funds, so far greater variety so that um, that's a better insurance for our market. So the evidence that you have with you, sir, suggests that a fair percentage of money that has come in this year has actually been long-term money? Or from that entities is, that are long-term? Let's put it that way. I mean, I know yeah, that's difficult uh, to quantify. Very, very difficult to uh, say. But we do see a lot of long-term uh, investors 
who had so far kept out of the Indian market, coming and saying that we are missing something in our piece of action. So um, we do see that uh, uh, attempt on the part of these long-term investors trying to come and register here and then invest into the Indian market. So my last question to you, you know, every time uh, a scam is hit, and you rightly said before, you know, it's not about India. The world over in the most developed countries, we see bigger scams actually. Do you feel that every time this scam happens, it puts that much more pressure on regulators to act quickly, to assuage feelings? Actually, the one thing that uh, I know the capital market has been able to achieve is that Whatever may have been the misdoings that happened between, uh, say, 96 and now, in these 14 years, we have not had a single failure of settlement on the stock. That's issue. right. I agree with you. So a person who holds shares is assured of being able to sell those shares and receive money, or a person who wants to invest is assured that when he parts with his money, he is going to get the shares in return for that. I think that's very, very crucial. And uh, our constant effort is to keep checking with the stock exchanges whether the margin mechanism, the health of the clearing corporation, all these things are in proper place or not. Because there is no way in which we can allow the confidence of the investors in the settlement mechanism to go away. And fortunately, 2008 was like a laboratory where we were actually tested for different levels for sudden fall in the market and so on. And I'm glad that uh, our market came out uh, with flying colors. There are areas of weakness. Uh, people still feel that uh, corporate governance is not up to the standard. We had a scandal also uh, relating to that. And uh, a lot of issues about whether oversight was not right or where did our checks and balances fail, that is still a subject of investigation and judicial pronouncement, so it's not uh, fair to talk about that. But yes, generally um, the feeling is that we need to improve on corporate governance. Mr. Bhave, as I close this interview, I want to uh, pledge on behalf of Bloomberg UTV, because we are sitting in your school here, that we will, over the next decade, try our best, whatever we can do, in terms of enhancing investor education. And we promise that we will take forward the whole invest education message that you've just given today. I'm glad you say that because our media is a very important component of this investor education and their ability to reach a wide audience is, of, uh, is a great uh, and a point of strength in this whole effort. So I wish you all the best in this effort. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Bhavi, and I wish you all the best, sir.